Yep. Hi, everyone. Welcome for this session. So I'm uh, Franck Baudin. I'm OpenStack Product Manager for NAV. Hi, I'm Pradeep Kalambi. I'm an Engineering Manager at Red Hat. So um, here is the agenda for today. So we will be covering some requirements around um, gathering metrics at scale and storing them. Um, we'll talk about a solution approach that we are looking to um, based on our experience with the legacy stuff that we have been using. Um, and then we'll dive into a detailed architecture on our new approach that we are talking about today using Prometheus Operator. Um, and then we'll go a little bit deeper into the configuration and deployment. Um, and then Frank will talk about the roadmap. So with that, I'll hand it over to Frank to talk about the requirements. Thanks. So first, what do we want to achieve? The goal is to, um, to monitor our OpenStack cluster at scale uh, with um, complying to a fault detection of few hundred milliseconds and ideally even less for telco and also for enterprise. And we want to have a well-defined API at multiple level, multiple level, this is very important, to handle this requirement. And uh, obviously we need a time series uh, to store this metric events. And uh, this time metric, uh, metric should handle the scale and the pace. So a lot of events, a lot of events per second. Uh, so this has to scale. And it has to be expandable to multi-cloud as well. And uh, so now let's have a look at historically what we had in OpenStack uh, when we talk about time series as a series. So this is telemetry. Uh, those are the telemetry components. On the, on the left, uh, you have the compute node with an agent, which is pushing data to the controller. And on the controller, you have other agent pulling data from the OpenStack API to get metrics from the APIs, which are pushing all of these uh, events and uh, metrics into a pipeline with uh, uh, Panko, Gnocchi, and uh, an alarm notifier. So this is the existing uh, solution, which is still working well. And the key element here is Gnocchi, which is a time series as a service, which is storing the metrics. So this is the point where all metrics are coming. And we tried to use this uh, existing component to monitor at scale. Uh, and we pushed the number of metrics per second up to the point it was breaking. And uh, we have to say that this point was not far enough with the expectation we have uh, in the first slide. So just to say that a typical monitoring interval for silo meter application is 10 minutes. So we expect to get new metrics every 10 minutes. We were talking about 100 milliseconds. So I let you do the math. And uh, bottlenecks, so we have pushed uh, as far as we could, and we have uh, profiled, debugged, identified the bottleneck as Gnocchi, the time series as a service. And also, on the controller node, uh, the, the load was not acceptable, and the, the controller was well, at 100%. At the same time, telemetry is getting data which are mainly used for chargeback, focused on the VMs. And we want to monitor the infrastructure. And, what's, and we want to monitor all of the nodes, controller and uh, compute. And for that, there is a, a tool named CollectD, so which is collecting uh, a lot of uh, metrics on the compute, load of the CPU, uh, uh, temperature, a lot of things. And this is exactly what people want. So our idea was OK. The first idea is we as Gnocchi, time series as a service, we have the metrics that we want with CollectD. OK, let's connect CollectD to Gnocchi. So we have implemented uh, a CollectD uh, front end. So CollectD was pushing data into Gnocchi. And what happened is, OK, so it did not work very well because the bottleneck was, uh, again, Gnocchi. So uh, it was not keeping up with the speed. And uh, Gnocchi was the bottleneck. And uh, we worked very hard to make it scale and debug it. And we pushed the limit further. But still, that was way not enough. 
Also, Gnocchi is an API uh, for the time series, which is standard in OpenStack, but uh, you don't have a lot of application to consume it and to build on top of that. So that was another issue, but this is a functional one. So just to recap, and also to give some perspective, by the way. So Stilometer project is one of the core projects from OpenStack from the beginning, and Stilometer API does not exist anymore. Now this is replaced by Gnocchi. We have separated Panko, the event API, and the API is now deprecated. Uh, the, and also the infrastructure monitoring is minimal with uh, telemetry. So at the end, and, and, and also, the metrics that we want are coming from ColecD. So this is how we have crafted our new solution, knowing that I want to say one point very positive here. Uh, telemetry has been designed for chargeback. It's working well for chargeback. It's still working well for chargeback at scale. And 10, mi 10, 10 minutes for chargeback is way enough. So the solution. So remember, we are happy with ColecD. So guess what? We have built a stack of a solution based on ColecD. And the key thing about this solution, this is a stack where you can cut where you want, depending on the solution that you want to, uh, uh, to implement, because you don't have to take it all. And uh, from a company perspective, we will support if you cut at any level, but you have to start from the bottom. So on the bottom, we have, uh, we have ColecD, which is gathering all of the events and metrics that we are going to distribute on AMQP, and this is going to be stored not in Yoki, but in Prometheus. And Prad will give a lot of details about how it works. Okay, great. Thanks, Frank. Um, so, as Frank described, I mean, we wanted to take a layered approach and provide multiple access points to the data. Um, so, for that, we have three levels of API that we expose. Um, so, one is at, at the ColecD plugin level itself. So, once the ColecD plugins are enabled and gathering the data, you can redirect the ColecD connection to wherever you want, right? So the second level is now let's take the data from ColecD all the way to a message bus. So as he said, we are using AMQ um, and it uses an AMQP 1.0 protocol. Um, so once the data is on the message bus level, now you have access at that point as well. So you can subscribe to the message bus and gather the data from there. Now you can go further and say, okay, I'll wait until the data gets all the way to the storage. So in this case, we use Prometheus, and once the data gets all the way to Prometheus, you can use you know, PromQL or any of the querying and get the data from there. Um, so the point here is we are giving you access at multiple levels, that way you know, you're not waiting for the data to come all the way to one point and you're overloading that, that particular endpoint. So, and to re-emphasize what Frank has already mentioned, so Solometer and Noki will continue to be for the chargeback and tenant metering purposes. So, this is what we call, th this is basically the name we came up with, and we could come up with a better one. Uh, so, it's called Service Assurance Framework Architecture. So, Service Assurance Framework is, is the total architecture end-to-end. -end. Um, so, the main pieces of the puzzle here are ColecD, as we mentioned, AMQ, which is a very scalable, you know, messaging protocol. Prometheus operator for, you know, um, uh, you know, time series data storage. And then, you know, we continue to support Solometer and Noki for chargeback. So let's look at the architecture here. So think of this from bottom to the top, right? So the bottom is your client, so which is your OpenStack cloud. So you could, you could have your controllers, computes, you have Ceph nodes, um, maybe you have your own Prometheus or OpenShift running on top of OpenStack, and you can also have application components. So we have ColecD plugins that we support that span across you know, performance monitoring all the way to application level. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about the plugins in a bit. So this essentially gives you the idea of we gather the data through the data collector, in our case it's ColecD, um, the data is sent across to the top to the message layer. And then once it's over there, we have multiple access points where we can either send the data directly to the Prometheus operator management cluster, which is what we call it, um, which is essentially Kubernetes 
or AKA OpenShift with Prometheus, you know, Grafana and Elasticsearch running on the top. Um, or you can skip that entirely and have third party applications directly integrate into the bus and get the data from there. Um, example, cell one, right? I mean, you can directly pull the data off of the bus without even having to worry about the cluster. So let's dig deeper into each of the components. So CollectD. So as you know, most of you are aware, CollectD is a very mature project. Um, it has a, a very big community, and you know, we have been involved with the CollectD community as well as with OpenNFV Barometer project. Um, and we have contributors contributing to these projects at the same time, you know, doing reviews and getting our plugins accepted. So we have been working with our partners like Intel um, in, you know, pushing to get a lot of plugins accepted upstream. Um, so we use CollectD 5.8, uh, which is our latest version of CollectD, which has a bunch of plugins enabled, um, along with the set of plugins we are mentioning here, which are part of the, the barometer project that we enable. Um, and of course, CollectD is natively supported uh, through OSP Director, um, aka the upstream triple O, uh, where you can actually use our uh, templates to deploy CollectD. So here's a quick overview of the OSP 13. Uh, this is our previous version, so we just announced OSP 14 two days ago. Um, so OSP 13 has a bunch of CollectD plugins pre-configured, so if you enable CollectD, um, through the director, you already get all of these enabled by default. And we also have a bunch of other plugins that we package that you can configure and enable through the heat templates. Um, but to begin with, we have a preset, pre-canned version of the uh, plugins that we already enable. Okay, so jumping onto the next piece of the puzzle, as you have seen, there's a big bus sitting there, right? So that has a lot of other components associated with it. So this is the AMQ7 interconnect, so which is our Red Hat messaging uh, project. Uh, it's a product, and we have an upstream for that as well. Um, and the, the advantage of that is it actually uses a mesh network. So what we have is a Cupid dispatch router. So we use Cupid as our messaging protocol, so which is the upstream Apache Cupid. Um, so you have two types of dispatch routers, I can say. So one is the edge router, which you want to run on the nodes, which are the OpenStack nodes, which are very lightweight um, and extremely scalable and very high performant, and they don't have any overhead. Um, so that is what we run on the OpenStack nodes. And then we have something called a core, route, core QDR, which is essentially the main router that that takes all the messages from the edge routers and then routes it, you know, appropriately. So the advantage of this is it uses like the shortest path algorithm to pass the message from the client to server, um, and you know it it uses all the you know buzzwords like high availability. So it has a really nice way of uh, you know uh, tr retrying. So the edge router keeps trying to connect to its connections to the core um, until it gets a connection. And if the core goes down, it tries another connection. So th it, it has a very high resilience. And not to mention, you know, it's it's stateless and it's it's very you know efficient end to end. So well, so let's get to the you know the star of the talk, right, Prometheus? Uh, I guess most of you are aware. I mean, this is a quick intro to Prometheus, but you know, so Prometheus essentially is an open source monitoring tool that um, you know most of you would have heard of. If you have not, it's an open source monitoring tool. Uh, it's mainly geared towards metrics, so it doesn't do logging, it doesn't do any trace routing. It's just for you know metrics. It uses a pull-based mechanism, right? So it does scraping through HTTP GET. So if you're looking at this picture, you have a Prometheus server, it uses HTTP to go to your targets. So in this case, a target could be you know, your, your node. Um, so it goes, gathers the data, and then you know, stores it in Prometheus. And then it has a really nice query language that you can query and do visualizations. Um, you can use Prometheus you know, Web UI to do the visualization, or you can use Grafana and create dashboards. Um, and another one is it has a very nice multidimensional data model, so it makes querying um, a, a, a lot more um, scalable. And, and of course, it has alerting and roles, so we use Alert Manager that we'll talk about a little bit. So 
this is all great, but one of the things about Prometheus is that the configurations can be very complex, right? So it's not something that's very easy to, you know, deploy and then redeploy and then maintain. So for that, there is this concept called an operator that was, you know, uh, it's an old concept, but the framework was built by CoreOS. Um, and essentially what operator is, it's basically a software abstraction, right? So it's basically taking the business logic, you know, out of the way into a little, you know, encapsulation, and it basically takes care of managing your application. Um, and, you know, it's mainly built for Kubernetes applications, and it manages the lifecycle and installation of your Kubernetes apps. Um, and it does through the custom resource definitions. So here, here I mean, this picture, I, I basically grabbed it from the CoreOS website. But the, you can see the flow. Essentially, this is the goal of operator, right? So it, it, it takes an expected state and an observed state, right? And basically, it goes through the sequence of it observes what the state is, it does analysis, and then it acts on it. So, for example, um, let's jump into Prometheus, right? So, in, in Prometheus' case, um, let's say we want to abstract the business logic and create an operator. So, what the Prometheus operator does is, um, let's say I create a custom resource definition and say, I want to run two instances of Prometheus with the version 3.10. Right. Okay. Great. So it ensures that you have that running. Now, like six months later, I want to upgrade my Prometheus to 3.11. So instead of you going and doing all that, you just create a custom resource definition and say, I want to use 3.11 version and make sure I have three instances running. So if it if it notices that it has two pods running, and you know it's running an older version, it's basically going to spin up another pod and then it's going to you know, bump your version to 3.11. So it, it makes all of this very easy, so you don't have to sit and muck with your configuration and all that, and those can get really long. So that's, that's basically the advantage of Prometheus operator. Um, and it preserves the configurability, and you know, it abstracts out the complex configuration. Um, so along with that, we have few other components in this service assurance architecture, right? So Prometheus is great. For metrics, so we need some way to handle events. We have a lot of events coming in as well, so we use Elasticsearch for events and logging, um, and we do it through an Elk stack that sits next to the Prometheus cluster. Um, along with that, so the advantage of using Prometheus here is that we can use uh, Elasticsearch events and then forward those to the Prometheus alert manager, and the alert manager, once it generates the alerts, it can send it back to the Cupid dispatch router. And I'll show you how all that works in a little bit. Um, and good segue, that, that works through Smart Gateway. So now the, the data that we receive from CollectD is obviously the CollectD format, right? So Prometheus has its own, you know, it's a time series database. It, go, it works through labels. So you need some way to translate the data from the CollectD format to Prometheus. So we built a something called a smart gateway, which handles that for events and metrics. Um, and then what it does is it, it takes the data, it converts to that format, and it exposes it through an HTTP server. And then Prometheus basically can come and scrape the data from the server. And also it helps with relaying the alarms, which I'll go in a little bit. And finally, we, you, Grafana, it's optional, but you can run Grafana to visualize your data. So the, the, this, is, this is an a little bit of an in-depth, uh, you know, deeper into the server side. So, so from, from let's go from uh, this side. So you have CollectD. So think of the CollectD, and the dots here are the QDRs. So th these are the OpenStack nodes, right, on, on that end. Now, the data is coming onto the AMQ bus. As you see, this is the blue line. And once the data is there, you have two dispatch routers, so the QDR A, QDR B. So in this case, we are running two instances of Prometheus. So if you have three instances of Prometheus, you'll have three of these. Just think of it that way. Now, for each of the instances of Prometheus, we have a separate smart gateway. So the way smart gateway works is, as you see, we have multiple components. We have, uh, once we gather the metrics, the metrics are grabbed through the metric listener. Right? And then it's cached, and then we do the conversion, and it's been exported through the metric exporter. 
So this exposes an HTTP API, and then basically Prometheus comes and scrapes the data from this API periodically, right? Every 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Now the next piece here is events, right? For events, we have something called an event listener. So what the event listener does is it wraps the data and then it basically works with um, the Elasticsearch client to send the data over to the Elasticsearch. Um, and then you, you can see a few more clients here. So one is the, the Prometheus alert manager client and you can see an HTTP and an alert publisher. So what's happening here is the Prometheus alert manager client is basically you know, handling the alerts. So once the alerts, alert rules are coming in, it has alert rules, and then once the event data is coming into the alert manager, what it does is it basically sends the data to the HTTP, via HTTP, and then the alert publisher publishes the data back to the QDR, and now it's back on the bus. So it's essentially a, a, a loop all the way from the event coming in, we process the event, get alerts, the alert is created, now send the alert back to the alert manager, and then we publish the alert to the bus. So that's, that's kind of a very high level overview. Um, and you can see once the data is in Prometheus, you can query and you know, use Grafana to do graphing and analysis and all that. So that, that's the architecture. Now let's get into configuration and deployment of this whole thing. I mean, um, it, it can be quite complex if you want to do it all you know, with a bunch of Ansible scripts. So what we basically do is we use triple O to do the integration. So the client side, when I say client side, the client side here is your OpenStack cloud. So you have an OpenStack cloud, you have controllers, computes, Ceph nodes, and whatnot running. So every node in your OpenStack cloud will have a CollectD agent and a Cupid dispatch router running. And this is configured and integrated through Triple O. Now, once you have these, these are, we, we have uh, containers built through Cola, so we have containers for both CollectD and the Cupid dispatch routers. Um, so the orchestration happens, we grab the container and we run it on each of these uh, hosts. Um, and then, through, through the environment template, when you're uh, installing these, you can configure your environment template to say, collect, this collect D needs to point to this dispatch router to send the data. So all that can happen through the templates I can show, I'll show you in the next slide. So here is an example of um, how do we enable collect D and QDR on the OpenStack nodes, right? So on the triple O side, you create an environment template so you enable two, two resources. So these two are the service registry resources. Um, and we pre-ship the QDR and collect the YAMLs for, for the Docker containers. So you enable those two, and then you can set some parameters. So in this case, what I'm saying is, I need to set the collect D connection type to AMQ1. So previously, we used the same thing, except the connection was knocky, right? So it's, it's very, you know, easy to configure. So in this case, we're using MQP1, and then you, know, you can set the instances and you know, the notification and all that. Um, the other piece here is the parameters, right? We need to tell where the QDRs are and what their ports and IP addresses are. So that's what you configure here. So now we created two YAMLs. What we do is, so as you see, we have an overcloud deploy. So when you're deploying your overcloud, um, and this happens on the undercloud. If you're familiar with triple O, there is an undercloud, uh, that's your management node, and then overcloud, which is your actual OpenStack cloud. Um, and here, what we, what we essentially do is um, we pass those two environment files, and then we do an overcloud deploy, so it runs these two services on top of each of the nodes. Um, now, on the server side, as I said, server side is a op Kubernetes cluster. It's an OpenShift cluster running on three bare metal nodes. So remember that we created an OpenStack cloud, which is one heat stack, and then we are going to deploy, using Triple O, we are going to deploy the server side, which is an OpenShift cluster running alongside. It's not on top of OpenStack. It's running next to OpenStack as a separate heat stack. And then we do the bootstrapping and you know, run Prometheus operator Grafana and all that on top. So here is an example of how you would deploy your server side stack so you use the same overcloud deploy command, but I'm basically enabling the OpenShift, and this will 
tell what version of OpenShift and what we use is we use OpenShift Ansible for now. Um, I mean, that might change in future. So we use OpenShift Ansible to drive the OpenShift cluster deployment and then, you know, we, we orchestrate running the um, services on the top. So Prometheus, Elasticsearch, and, and QDR. Uh, so here is a post-deployment overview. So this is how it'll look. I mean, this is in my setup. I mean, it might look a little different in yours. But you know, I have the OpenStack nodes at the top. And then the, another cluster, as you see, it's a telemetry node. I have three nodes, um, three physical nodes. And on top of that, I will have you know, OpenShift running. And on top of that, you'll have the applications, which are Prometheus and all that. So this is kind of a global, you know, holistic view of the end-to-end, -end, right? So on, on, on one side, you see the OpenStack cloud that you have, and each of the nodes will have the CollectD and the QDRs running. The data is sent to the AMQ bus, as you see. And then on, on the other side, you have the server side, which is your Prometheus operator cluster. Um, and you can see it goes through QDR. You have the service gateway, um, smart gateway, and then the data is sent through the, you know, this one. Um, so this is kind of an overview, uh, a little more details on you know, how the data happens. So we have something called a proton client, which is what is responsible for taking the data in and out of the collect D and send it through the, the messaging um, and all that. So, so a little bit about scale. Um, so we have, so as, as Frank mentioned, so our main bottleneck was Naki, right? So the storage and the IO there, um, mainly what we have noticed was once you have Naki with a lot of data sending in, the CPU pegs quite a bit. Um, so we did a little bit of um, scale testing, mainly with Prometheus. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an overview of the hardware that we used. Um, and some of the, um, the data that we were looking for is the raw metrics, the time series, um, and the, the rules, the alerting rules that we created. And our target, we wanted to push it as much as we can. So our target was 4,000 hosts with hundreds of metrics each. So that's like millions of metrics per second. And, you know, Prometheus was able to keep it up pretty well. So with four CPUs, this is then aggregation. So all the way to 4,000 hosts, we, we are barely using 50% of the CPU still. So it was doing very well. Um, so we were very happy with the performance. So with that, um, I'll hand it over to Frank to talk about the roadmap. Yep. Thanks, Prad. So all that Prad, so yeah, a, a little of explanation. So. Um, be, beside the name of the upstream release, you have our product uh, number, so 13 for Queens, Rocky, Stein. So Rocky has been delivered upstream, and we have announced 14 this week, and our next release, Steinbase, will be 15. From all that you have seen, everything is on master, meaning it will be in Stein. So in Stein, this whole thing will be GA. In 14, that you can almost have, you have everything but the ability to install Prometheus from the triple O. So you have to install Prometheus with an Ansible playbook. So this is what we call that tech preview, but this is almost all there. And uh, something that we do at Red Hat is uh, because our 13 release is what we call a long life, we are going to backport these features because our customer, this is what they use. Most of them, they use 13, they use 10 today, and 13, they're going to use 16, but uh, very few will go on 14 and 15 uh, uh, into production because of the long life aspect. And now that we have in 15, that will be in 13, the ability to deploy a, a great monitoring tool for one cluster, we need to go multi-cluster. So this is what we are going to work next. And what do we have? On the bottom, so you have, a, let's say, a larger cluster for Prometheus, which is central. That can, that can monitor, uh, on the right, a local, a local uh, OpenStack deployment, plus remote deployments. That what we call edge deployment. So have you heard about edge this week? So how do you monitor your edge, your thousands of edge sites? OK, this is how you do. And then you have two kinds of edge cluster. You have the small one where you don't want to put Prometheus. This is the middle one. So you can remotely monitor. So this is something that, uh, 
So we are going to work on and we'll make sure that uh, this is flying well with whatever kind of network you have in the middle and we are going to provide the characteristic about latency packet drop until it does not work because there is a limit to everything. And then you're going to have federation of Prometheus because you, you're going to have clusters where you will want to deploy a local Prometheus to monitor locally and what you are going to do is aggregate with a federation of Prometheus so you have a central uh, monitoring point which is what people want instead of having thousands. Yeah, and another one um, that, that we are looking into is how do we shrink this architecture, right? I mean, this is, this is great for large deployments, but we also want to think about how do we, um, you know, make this for a smaller cloud. So if they don't want to invest in too much hardware, how do we make this work for smaller clouds? So that's, that is also something that we are looking into to shrink this. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. And uh, we have time for questions, if any. What about uh, storing for long term metrics? Because for the years it's very ugly to store in the metrics for, for example, six months. Yeah, this is something that we don't provide today. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, de definitely that, that is a concern that we have with Prometheus and, and you know, we are, we are looking into alternate solutions that, you know, we, we could use Prometheus alongside, you know, um, another technology like, you know, Thanos or something to see if we can um, use it for long-term purposes. But I agree with you. <laughs> that, that is something that we did not forget. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what we don't provide um, Partners can provide and build on top of API. And the key thing about this uh, solution is if you don't like MQP bus, you can just rely on the CollectD. And if you don't like Prometheus, you can just pin in AMQP. So this is a, a pluggable solution. And the top of the plug, uh, the, the pluggable solution today is Prometheus. Um, just wondering if you could clarify on the um, AMQP bus, is it completely brokerless, so you only have the Cupid routers, or is there a broker somewhere that I kind of missed on the slides? Yeah, I mean, it, it is brokerless from metric standpoint. For events, we do use um, uh, Artemis broker uh, to actually send the events over. So for events, we do use Artemis broker. Um, so the, the solution, if presented is for monitoring infrastructure, right? And for, for tenant monitoring, uh, monitoring as a service, you still recommend using Gnocchi. Is that the message I have taken from one of the early slides, right? So, what you, so just to repeat your question, so um, can we use this architecture to monitor infrastructure for, for tenant. and tenants as well? Yeah, well, so what, what do you recommend for tenant monitoring if I want to... Uh, so you mean tenant my, monitoring as in uh, the OpenStack, like the services? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, which tenant are you I, referring to here? I would like to expose my metrics to, to, uh, to users. To, to what, I'm sorry? I would like to expose monitoring as a service. Sure, OK. Yeah, so expose metrics of um, applications, for example, to uh -huh. the users. Yeah. Um, that is something that we could do as part of the smart gateway. So we already have some logic that we use to convert the, the data format from CollectD to the Prometheus format, right? So Prometheus has this concept of labels that we can leverage to add like the tenant information, the UUID and all that. Um, we do not have that support today, but that is something that we are looking into, even from OpenStack standpoint, like the service level metrics that we gather at OpenStack, we will need to make sure that is somehow queryable from the from, from Prometheus side, right? So yes, so the 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 place where that logic would be would be in the smart gateway. Um, but yeah, that is something that we are currently working on. So hopefully by OSP fifteen it should be in there. All right, thanks. Yeah. Thank, thanks for the talk. I thought it was very interesting. Um, I, I, the, the architecture of having a central message queue where metrics are, are published onto it, and you have other processes 
subscribing to those metrics. Um, it's quite similar to Manaska. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I wondered if you considered um, using it. So um, I'm, I'm not familiar enough about Manaska to comment on that. Uh, but I mean, uh, we, 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 so the, the decisions we made here um, were, were based on you know, the, the direction we wanted to go with respect to OpenShift and Prometheus. Um, and you know, we knew that the AMQ message routing that we have, which is, uh, which is using the AMQ 1.0 protocol, um, scales well. So the, this puzzle that we put together seemed like you know, it, was, it was a good direction, so we just went with that. So we, yeah, I, I cannot comment on Monesca because I don't know enough about it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the talk, it was amazing. Um, so this solution basically uh, solves me all the alerts, metrics, and logs, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in one uh, piece. Yes. Yeah. So we, we for Elasticsearch we use events and um, logging for Elasticsearch and metrics as for Prometheus. So yeah, we handle all three. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done.